Good afternoon. Welcome to the Church of the Holy Spirit Parish. Still basking in the glory of Easter today, we celebrate God's unparalleled mercy. Out of mercy for all of us, Jesus died on the cross, atoning for our sins, past, present, and future. Out of mercy for those whose faith is weak and doubt, and doubt is strong, Jesus comes to reassure us of his eternal presence. Out of mercy for those who he cannot see, Jesus blesses them in their faith. This Easter season, let us rejoice for the risen Lord is in our midst forever bestowing God's divine mercy upon us. We have a few announcements. Holy Spirit Eucharistic, Eucharist candidates are beginning their formation to join us at the table of the Lord in June. Please keep our 26 candidates in your prayers. Come join the women from our parish family as we take 90 minutes to pray with and be inspired by the women in the Acts of the Apostles and St. John, St. Paul's letters. This is also a great opportunity for mothers and daughters to take a faith break together. We will gather in the Holy Spirit School Library on Sunday, April 21st at 3 p.m. Take some time to renew your soul during this Easter season. Now, in order for us to have a prayerful liturgy celebration, please take a moment at this time to silence your cell phone if you have it with you. Thank you so much for your cooperation and understanding. And now please stand and join us in singing our opening hymn. We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We gather this vigil to celebrate this holy sacrifice of the Mass as we continue in this, our Easter season, as we specifically look on this weekend of God's mercy. God's mercy, as many may be, uh, be familiar with, Divine Mercy uh, Sunday, but also the mercy in which God chose uh, St. Thomas uh, on this day, the, se the, uh, the second week of Easter, that he showed St. Thomas. Many times we refer to him as Doubting Thomas, the mercy in which he showed him. Share a little bit more about that within the scripture time, in the homily time. This time in the Mass, we're going to ask God always for forgiveness so that we may have hearts and minds that are truly thankful. 
truly thankful to be able to be in his presence and to share that with one another. In place of the penitential rite, which many times we say, we're going to have the sprinkling rite, which represents uh, our baptism, symbolizes our baptism. Just as you walk into the church, uh, you might take some holy water. It's a constant reminder that we are baptized into Christ. And the sprinkling rite is a way to do so within the Mass. So we will do so at this time. To that much. Thought you wanted more there. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers were of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of their his possessions were his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them for those, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, the disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life 
in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned in the beginning of Mass, this weekend, the the Sunday, Sunday after, the weekend after Easter Sunday is known as Mercy Sunday. And it's always been known as Mercy Sunday because of this event of mercy in which we, uh, which we, many times know as Doubting Thomas. And yet it's become more popular over the last century because of visions uh, that have been given to a nun, uh, which we call Saint Faustina. Uh, She's been elevated uh, to a saint. And there's much that you can read about it. Some might be familiar with it. And it's not something new. It's something that is now bringing to life God's very mercy. And I'll share a little bit uh, about that more. But first, to look at this uh, encounter that we're familiar with, Jesus and St. Thomas. I like to many times try to read between the lines to kind of see what was happening before and after, and does it make my, what I'm thinking, correct? For me, it many times helps to bring the scriptures even more uh, alive. And I like to do so with this event with St. Thomas, because he wasn't at the we would say the first mass. What were they doing together, locked together? Again, on this uh, next Sunday, they were together in community, in prayer, some fear maybe, because they were, look, they were being hunted. And, but also, they were celebrating what we gather to do and continue to do, to celebrate the Eucharist. And Christ appears in a way that we are awaiting to see Christ and to experience him and to see him for how he is. We are thankful and blessed to be able to receive Christ through the word of God in which we hear and the Eucharist in which we receive, hidden under the appearance of bread and wine, but yet the very substance is Christ himself. Not something we're meant to try to wrap our heads fully around, because we won't. But yet, with where we can't understand, we have to live in faith. But in heaven, we will receive the Eucharist, but it will not have to be hidden under the appearance of bread. It'll be able to see him for who he is. A whole other homily could be, well, why would Christ give himself this way? Why wouldn't he just show himself? And this will be, at some point, maybe in another homily, because we would either die of fright and we probably would run away. Now, I know that sounds very odd, but as we come to know him, that will happen less and less. That's why we have to come to know him. We have to desire his presence on his terms. That's the hard part. On his terms, not my terms, not your terms on his terms. And that's where the importance of obedience, the reason we can be believers in the resurrection and eternal life is because Jesus was obedient to his Father, Good Friday. 
He didn't do it because it felt good or anything like that. He did it out of obedience. And obedience to his father. Why was he obedient? Because he, he loves his father. And his father loves him. Obedience creates the groundwork for love. Without obedience, you cannot love. Because it becomes all about you. It becomes all about me. We might see a little bit of that in this reading. And this is where I'll, I'll, look, I'll put, look into it a little bit. Of what I think. Why was Thomas not there? We're not told. But we can conjecture the fact that the apostles, 11 who, 10, well, 11 who were not there, St. John, but the rest weren't. We can imagine that they were experiencing on Good Friday and after a lot of emotions going on in their life. Hurt, anger, Dismay, maybe to some, re- some extent despair. They gave everything to follow this man named Jesus who said he was the Messiah. They're still trying to come to understand what that means, but they're learning they need to grow in faith because understanding just ain't going to work. So it's possible they were thinking, I just gave everything for, for him. What just happened? Now, for whatever reason, Thomas wasn't there. Maybe he, maybe he was angry. Maybe he didn't want to be with the others. He didn't want to deal with it. He didn't want to talk about it. Some of us might be able to relate to that in our own personalities. We might not want to deal with our failures and sins or whatever he saw. But Christ appeared. He wasn't there. Then at some point, they meet up. St. Thomas meets up with the others. We don't know how that occurred, but they did. And they tell him, we have seen him. I always wondered for a split second, did Thomas's heart jump? Did it open? And then it closed right back up. Nope. I'm not going to believe unless I see the nail marks in his hands and and I put my finger into his side. Doesn't want to get hurt again. On a natural human way, that makes sense. I don't want to get hurt again. I don't want to be duped again. Could hurt more even the second time if I believe. And I, have, and I extend that faith. But he wanted to. He wanted to believe it. Who knows? Maybe he was an A-type personality, something like that. He needed to see things. We need A-type personalities. They're the ones who are going to look deeper into something. But as in any of our personalities, we all have drawbacks. A-type personalities, a lot of times, get in their own way. All of our personalities can get in the way, but there's also beauties to them. Part of the beauty might be that the apostles got to see Jesus again in his resurrected form. Didn't sound like Jesus needed to come back, but he came back just for Thomas. Just for Thomas. In a sense, to tell him, stop this nonsense. You know you believe. You know you want to believe. Let this whatever go away. Put, therefore, put your finger in my hands. Put it in my side. And stop unbelieving. But yet, so Jesus showed mercy. And this is helpful for us to look at what mercy is. Sometimes it's easy to look at mercy as just pity. I feel bad for this person. It can be wrapped in there, but mercy is much more than that. 
Mercy is something much bigger, much more beautiful, but much more difficult. Everything of the spiritual life is, but we're told it's worth it. That's why we come, that's why we hear the word of God, that's why we come and we share it with one another. Because if we stay out there too long, we'll start to believe maybe it's not worth it. Jesus shows mercy because he loves him, and it's called mercy because St. Thomas didn't deserve it. That's what we miss so often as fallen human nature of, human be- of humanity. He did not deserve it. And that's hard to hear. Because you and I do not deserve God's mercy. We're not worthy of it. We don't act as we should around him many times. And yet he still shows us his mercy because he loves us more than we can ever imagine. But like St. Thomas, he wants us to keep coming around. Stop unbelieving. Keep coming around. He keeps coming around us because he wants our hearts and minds to keep coming around, to keep transforming, not to give up. Why was he so hard on the Pharisees, the leaders? They were very obedient. They did everything right. Except their obedience was for the purpose of their own selfish ends. And the purpose of obedience is so that we can come to know Christ. It's not an end in and of itself. But it's necessary. So that when it doesn't feel good to be Catholic, when it doesn't feel good to do what's right, We don't rely on the feeling of the good, but on the obedience that we are called to. Trusting that it's worth it, and its end is in Christ. It's hard for you and I to show each other mercy. It's hard for a husband and wife to show each other mercy. It's hard for a best friend to maybe show their best friend their mercy, a mercy. It might be hard for a parishioner to show his priest mercy and a priest to show their parishioner mercy. If we understand mercy to mean that they don't deserve it, but yet you're going to offer them mercy. And you can do so only because you know God's mercy itself. You want it and you want to live in it. And why is it hard? Because the other person doesn't deserve it. That doesn't take away accountability. Mercy is not is not excusing someone's accountability. Because even Jesus, after he shows Thomas mercy, what does he do? What does he say publicly? You believe because you've seen? Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. If if you don't think that was a little dig, now now I'm, I'm being very fallen humanity with using that to make a point. I don't know if Jesus gives digs, but he does hit us with a, with a two-by-four at times, as we all know. And for some of us, he keeps moving up, four-by-fours and whatever it might be. And then if we get to such a point we don't really listen, then he, he just whacks us very lightly. Mercy is hard. But it has to start with all the relationships that I just mentioned and more, and ultimately with God. You and I have to start from a standpoint that we're not worthy of the other person's love. You want a marriage to go bad? Start believing that. You don't, they deserve, you don't, they, you deserve it. They deserve it. Look what I do for you. I do all this for you. That creeps in. Any friendship, any relationship, we might not think it, but how often do we act like it? God, I go to Mass every Sunday. I'm a good person. Usually that's followed then, why are you allowing me to suffer? 
even though you suffered on the cross, and the greatest gift that you give me is I can do it with you because it'll offer eternal life. If you find, or I find, mercy difficult, that's a good sign. But we can't leave it there. You and I will be better at it once we keep going to our Lord. We keep, we keep wanting his mercy, knowing we're not worthy of it, but, but, but he still gives it to us because he wants us to keep coming back to him. And that's what mercy means. That was this image of divine mercy. You can read about it if you want to, and more so, much more than what can be said here. But if one believes what Jesus spoke to this nun in about the 30s, if you believe that what she, they, she, he said to her, that he wants the message of mercy out, all anybody has to do, that's how simple it is, on this weekend, especially Sunday, East, uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, they just look upon an image of the Divine Mercy and you say, Jesus, I trust in you. There's a lot of other things you can do to prepare your heart and mind. Say the Divine Mercy Chaplet and so forth. Thousands are going to go 45 minutes uh, east of here to Stockbridge because they want to have that. But if somebody's homebound, they can't get out, they can look at a piece of paper with the image. You can look online. You can see on a computer screen the image and just, Jesus, I trust in you. And all the punishments of sin are taken away. The guilt we take away through confession. But everything that comes, that, that baggage that comes because of sin is taken away. We just have to believe it. That's what's hard. I will say hard for me to believe it's as simple as that. And our Lord and Jesus will take it away. So I pray that you, as much as I need to for myself, can believe that simple truth that he showed to Thomas and that he wants to show to you and I. Jesus, I trust in you. Please stand and let us together profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. God's mercy endures forever, and so we confidently bring our needs before the Lord, asking for the mercy we seek. Our response is, Jesus, risen Lord, hear us. For all who lead our church, that the risen Jesus may continue to transform their hearts and lives according to his perfect will, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, hear us. For political leaders around the world, that Christ's sacrificial love may inspire them in crafting policies and laws that protect, protect the dignity and sanctity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, hear us. 
For those who have not been baptized into the faith, may our witness of the risen Christ at work in our lives be a source of inspiration for them. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, <laughs> hear us. For our gathering of, fr of family and friends this Easter season, may, be a may it be a time of witness, growth, and harmony. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, hear us. For all who have received, been received into the church at the Easter vigil, may they continue to grow in holiness of life and always be open to the fullness of the life offered by the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, hear us. For our community of faith, that the Lord may inspire us as a resurrection people who with our lives praise God for all he has done for us. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, hear us. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, may they rest in the eternal peace of God's heavenly kingdom, especially for John Ennis, Romy Eisenhut, and the DeCarla family for whom this mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Lord, the Lord, hear us. Risen Lord, you remake what is broken, enliven what is dying, and release all that is held captive. We depend upon your mercy to refashion us and guide us so that we may at last enter in, into your kingdom, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. One thing I, I don't, if I forget something in the homily, I just usually let it go, but this, I think, you can, this is important enough where one year, because we talk about look upon that image and say, Jesus, I trust in you. One year as I was preaching after Mass, someone came up to me along with someone else being guided and said, Father, I'm blind. And as my heart sank, the person lifted it back up and said, Father, I'm not telling you that to make you feel bad, but I just want to share with you that uh, I had somebody share with me what the image looked like so I could depict it in my own mind and just said it was one of the most powerful things that was shared with them. So I share that to keep that uh, in your mind because obviously there might be a lot of people who can't see the image, but somebody can lovingly share what the image looks like for them. Thank you.
pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, and we now join them. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered, in, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command of foreign by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other at the sign of peace. Peace with you, dear. Peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. For those who cannot celebrate Mass with us in person and those who are unable to receive today, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand and let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, before we conclude, uh, this uh, week we will have uh, the daily Mass as we've uh, had it in Lent at uh, Sacred Heart and at uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, so there will be a uh, 6.30 p.m. Tuesday and then a 9 a.m. on a Wednesday and for a little while, we'll take it uh, week, uh, week, by, uh, week by week. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And let us ask the Archangel St. Michael and the entire angelic order to protect our faith, our families, and parishes as we pray. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Do not rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.